What is up amigos? Today we are looking at estimating the skin friction drag and this is going to be split into three different parts, the laminar, turbulent and laminar and turbulent boundary layers. So if you haven't looked at our video on boundary layers, check that out in the card up here. So first of all, we're gonna be looking at a laminar boundary layer. So to begin with, we have a flat plate and flat plates are pretty good approximations in terms of the flow over a lot of things, including an airfoil. So if you calculate the skin friction drag on a flat plate, that's pretty similar to what an airfoil is. So that allows us to be able to figure out what an airfoil's skin friction drag is, for example, quite easily. So let's say we have a flat plate here and flow comes over it and under it. So we have a flat plate and then the flow comes along and then it goes over and underneath. And as it goes along, obviously the boundary layer keeps increasing in size. And let's say the flat plate is a distance of C, so it's C meters long, and we can go along the flat plate an X amount. So let's say we are 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 meters as we progress along the flat plate. And as we go along the flat plate, this delta we say is the boundary layer thickness. And it's quite, actually, quite easy to actually calculate the boundary layer thickness for a, a blasius boundary layer, something that's called a Blasius boundary layer. This is a quintessential boundary layer that we always talk about when we have flow going over a flat plate with no pressure gradient. If you don't understand what that means, don't worry about it. Just think that this is a typical boundary layer that everyone uses for theory. So the boundary layer height along this flat plate, so if you go anywhere along here, we can calculate what the thickness is based on this equation here, which is pretty cool. So it's five times X, which is the distance from the leading edge divided by the square root of the Reynolds number based on that distance. So let's say we are here, which is one meter from the leading edge. All we have to do is substitute one into this X here. And for the Reynolds number, we substitute one for the X here. Then we put in the, the density, the velocity, and the uh, viscosity. Then we can calculate the Reynolds number and then calculate the thickness of this boundary layer. This is important because the thicker the boundary layer is, the slower the flow is near the wall. And the slower the flow is near the wall, the lower the shear stresses are, and that means the lower the skin friction drag is. That's the technical theory of it. We don't need to go into that too much. We're gonna be looking at more equations in this video. So because we have the flat plate and we have the flow going over the top and bottom of it, we have the drag on the top and drag on the bottom, and they are equal because there's no difference between the top and bottom for this flat plate. So that means the total drag for this flat plate is not just the top, uh, the drag from the top or the drag from the bottom, but the drag from the top and bottom. So drag from the top plus drag from the bottom. And because the drag from the top equals the drag from the bottom, this just equals two times the drag from the top or two times the drag from the bottom, which means we only need to calculate the skin friction drag on one of these surfaces, and then we can just multiply it by two to get the total drag, skin friction drag for this entire plate. So how do we do that? We have an equation here, which is CF, skin friction drag coefficient, equals, for a lamina boundary layer, I should stress, equals 1.328 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number of that flat plate. So the Reynolds number based on the length of that flat plate, C, is the density times the velocity times the chord, the length, divided by the viscosity. So let's, and then for the total skin friction drag, it's just two times this, because this skin friction drag coefficient is just for one surface, either the top or the bottom. So let's go through an example to show you how this works. So in this example, we have the friction velocity equals two meters per second. The length of the flat plate is 1.5 meters, and the density of air is 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed, which is gonna assume that, and the viscosity is 1.825 by 10 to the minus five. Now, substituting all that into CF, we just have 1.328 divided by this Reynolds number, and this comes out to be 0 0.00299. So that's the skin friction drag coefficient for either the top or the bottom surface. It's as simple as that. And the total skin friction drag coefficient for this plate in laminar flow, this laminar flow, is 0 0.00598. So that's very powerful. Let's move on to turbulent boundary layers now. So in that, in that video on turbulent boundary layers. If you haven't watched that again, make sure to watch that and you understand the difference between turbulent and laminar boundary layers. Now, the thickness of a turbulent boundary layer is quite different to a laminar boundary layer. It's actually quite a bit thicker. And so the equation to calculate the thickness delta is different. So we can see here, it is quite different between these two. First of all, the numerator is different, but more importantly, the denominator, instead of being a square root of the Reynolds number, it's to the power of one on five. So what this means is that the turbulent boundary layer will grow much quicker. 
In addition to that, because the thickness is different and the tone of the boundary layer is just different in general compared to the laminar boundary layer, the skin friction uh, drag coefficient is quite different, the calculation. So we have down here, it's 1.328 divided by the square root of the Reynolds number. For the laminar case, for the turbulent case, it's 0 0.074 divided by the Reynolds number to the power of 0 0.2. So again, a similarity though is that the total skin friction drag coefficient of the entire plate is just two times the skin friction drag coefficient of either the top or the bottom of the plate. And again, each one of those are the same, so that's quite nice. So let's go through an example to show you how this is different to the laminar case. So we have all the exact same conditions where we have the friction velocity is the same at two meters per second, the quad is the same at 1.5 meters per second, the density is the same, 1.2 kilograms per meter cube, the vis viscosity is the same, 1.825 by 10 to the minus five. But substituting these values into this equation here, we get a significantly different skin friction drag coefficient. It's 0 0.00646 instead of 0 0.00299 twice as much as the laminar case. What that tells us is the skin friction drag over a flat plate with a turbulent boundary layer is significantly more draggy than over a laminar boundary layer. This is because the boundary layer profile for a turbulent boundary layer, so let's say we have the flat plate here, and we have the flow going over, and we have the laminar boundary layer, the profile looks like this. The turbulent boundary layer will look a lot more like this, so the velocity near the wall is much greater for the turbulent case than the laminar case. That results in a lot more skin friction drag as we've just seen here. And again, to get the total skin friction drag, we times this by two to get 0 0.01292. Now, that is the skin friction drag for a laminar boundary layer and a turbulent boundary layer. Well, it's in reality, we can get the flow over a flat plate being entire, entirely laminar. But generally speaking, most flat plates when we have turbulent flow over it doesn't start turbulent. We have starting as laminar, and as we go over the flat plate, it will typically transition to turbulent. It's very rare to have the boundary layer being completely turbulent from the very start of the flat plate. So in reality, this part here is not really realistic. This part is because we can have just laminar flow over a, over a boundary layer, in a over a flat plate with a boundary layer, but we can't really just have complete turbulent flow over a boundary in a boundary layer over a flat plate. So in reality, we now have to look at the laminar and turbulent boundary layer. So we have this situation here where we have the flow coming in. It starts off laminar, then it transitions to turbulent. So what is the skin friction drag coefficient for this entire flat plate with this phenomenon going on? We're going through that as well in this video. So let's cover this up so we can control where our eyes are looking. This will make it a little bit easier to, to follow. So now let's look at a typical boundary layer, which is a laminar to turbulent transition. So we have the flat plate here, and it's five meters long. To begin with, the flow starts off and it's laminar. It's traveling at a velocity of u infinity. Then at some point, it transitions to turbulent. And the length of the laminar part is x1. The length of the turbulent part is x2. And both of these together obviously make the entire length of the flat plate as five meters per second. Now, one thing that we need to understand is where the critical Mac number, where, sorry, where the critical Reynolds number is, not Mac number, Reynolds number. <laughs> so the critical Reynolds number is the point at which the flow transitions from laminar to turbulent. And we're going to assume that that's 500,000. And this is a very standard number. You can pick anywhere between 200,000 and a million. That's pretty common. But 500,000 is a very common number that we usually select. And if you don't know, a Reynolds number, check out the video that we did on the Reynolds number and you understand why we have these numbers and how the Reynolds number is important, but also where it falls short and what other parameters are important to consider when we want to understand the flow. But anyway, let's assume that the critical Reynolds number is 500,000. This is where the flow transitions to turbulence. So to figure out where that is in terms of this distance here, we just use the Reynolds number equation as rho v characteristic length divided by the viscosity. We rearrange to get x1, which is the distance from the leading edge. That equals 500,000 divided times by the uh, viscosity divided by the density times u infinity. And let's say we have the exact same properties as we did in these two examples. So u infinity is two, the Reynolds number is the um, density is 1.2, and the viscosity is 1.825 by 10 to the minus five. Substituting that into these, this equation, we get the critical Reynolds number and is 500,000, x1 is 3.802 meters. What this means is that the 
boundary layer will transition at 3.802 meters from the leading edge of this flat plate. That's important because now what we're doing is we want to calculate the skin friction drag coefficient from the laminar part, then from the turbulent part separately. Then we can add them together. Now, this tells us that over the entire flat plate, which is five meters long, 0.76, so 76% of the flat plate is laminar. The remaining 0.24 or 24% is now turbulent. So the majority of this flat plate is actually experiencing a laminar boundary layer. This is an important ratio here, which we'll use right here. So to calculate the skin friction drag coefficient, we're using this equation here. And this again is not exact, it's an estimate for the skin friction drag. And the only way to get the exact skin friction drag is to take measurements often with hot wires or with CFD at the interface between the surface and the flow. But this is a very good approximation for an equation. So what we have here is, first of all, the skin friction drag of the laminar part plus the skin friction drag of the entire turbulent part minus the skin friction drag of the turbulent part if we had the turbulent part starting from the very start of the leading edge. So what this means is we are calculating the skin friction drag component of just the laminar part then what we're saying is, okay, well now we have the entire flat plate we're assuming is completely turbulent, but we know that part of it is laminar. So that laminar part that we've calculated to be turbulent, we're gonna be subtract that turbulent part away from it and only keep the turbulent part that corresponds to the part that is actually turbulent. In addition to this, we have these numbers, 0 0.76 times this laminar part, zero, minus 0 0.76 times this turbulent part. This corresponds to the amount of the flat plate that is in the laminar part and the amount of flat plate that is not. And you might be saying, why do we have 0 0.76 here instead of one? Well, the reason is because if you can tell here, the thickness of the laminar boundary layer is quite thin compared to the turbulent boundary layer. So technically speaking, if you were to extend this boundary layer profile down, you'd say, okay, the boundary layer actually starts here, when obviously it doesn't for the turbulent part. It has to start further closer to the leading edge, as you would expect. So we have this substituted in to kind of cobble together the different parts of the laminar and turbulent boundary layer regions to get a good approximation for this coefficient drag. So let's move on here. We're going to start with this first term here, this coefficient drag due to the laminar part. So using this equation here, CF equals 1.32 divided by the Reynolds number for this laminar part, which we know is 500,000, we get 0 0.00188 for this next part, which is the turbulent part, we are now using the turbulent skin friction drag equation here. So we have 0 0.074 divided by the Reynolds number of the entire flat plate, because we're assuming that the entire flat plate is now turbulent, to the power of 0 0.2, which gives us this number here. Now what we're doing is we are calculating the skin friction drag if we were just for this front part. Let's, we're assuming that this front part is turbulent as well because we want to subtract that from the entire turbulent part that we just calculated here, because obviously this initial part is not turbulent. So we calculate the turbulent boundary layer based on, sorry, the turbulent um, skin friction drag based on this boundary layer here, if the Reynolds number was 500,000. We get this number here. Finally, we substitute all this into this equation. You can see this part here, this part here, this part here, plus 0 0.76, 0 0.76 we get a total description drag coefficient of this flat plate, this top surface of 0.00243. That means that the entire description drag coefficient is two times this, which is 0.004865. So with that, we come to the end of this video. Let's recap what we went through because we went through a lot here. And if you don't understand this, either drop us a comment below or you can get in contact with us or watch the video again and or. Let's go through this again just briefly. So we are estimating the skin friction drag coefficient. And to do that, we're gonna look at a laminar boundary layer, a turbulent boundary layer, and the more realistic case, a laminar and turbulent boundary layer. For the laminar boundary layer, we have the flow going over the top, and we can use this equation here to calculate the skin friction drag coefficient simply by knowing the Reynolds number of the flat plate. Similarly, if the boundary layer is entirely turbulent, we can use this equation here to calculate the description drag option by only knowing the Reynolds number again based on the flat plates characteristic length and then the flow properties. And it's quite easy to calculate what these are. 
Now, I should mention this skin friction drag coefficient is only for the top surface or the bottom surface. To get it for the entire flat plate, it's, you have to double that. Going to a more realistic case, which is when you have a flow going over a flat plate and it transitions from laminar to turbulent as you go over, you then have to use this setup here, where what we're doing is we're taking into account the component of skin friction drag due to the laminar part. Then we add the entire skin friction drag if the entire thing was turbulent. Then we minus the skin friction drag if of this part to of the turbulent part in this section here to isolate it from the rest of the boundary layer. That's that equation there. If you do all that, you can then calculate what the entire skin friction drag coefficient is. So that's in this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like this, check out our playlist. And if you want to learn more about this, check out a book by Johnny Anderson called Fundamentals of Aerodynamics. And it goes through this again in some detail and in more examples. And if you want to get better at theory and or CFD in aerodynamics, check out our courses in the link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.